yakitori. It's delicious, it's chicken. Who doesn't love this? This is a Japanese dish and yaki means grilled, tori means chicken. And it's very famous in Japan, not so famous here in America, but I'm gonna be sharing you how to make it. I'll actually be sharing three different ways to do it. The traditional way, the more quick, I think convenient way to entertain lots of people. And the last way is right on the stove with a frying pan. So let's get into the ingredients and start cooking. The first ingredient is the chicken. I've deboned a whole chicken, but if you just want the simplicity and get right to the delicious meat, chicken thighs is the way to go. So all you're gonna do is go ahead and remove that skin. You're gonna uh, cut that meat out. I'm gonna show you different ways to prepare it a little bit later, but basically chicken thighs is a meat I'll be using. Last but not least is the sauce. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ingredients for the sauce. I've got some chicken bones that I'm just gonna be infusing into the rest of the sauce. I've also got some soy sauce here. I've got some mirin. Make sure you get proper mirin, not like mirin flavored liquid. Also, I've got some sake, and last but not least, I've got some sugar. Let's start cooking the sauce. So this is called a tare. That's just the Japanese name for it, and you're gonna go ahead and put a pot on your stove, get it warmed up. I'm gonna be using sake and mirin. And my first goal is to cook out all the alcohol. Next, I wanna add my grilled chicken bones, infuse some of that chicken flavor into the sake and mirin. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my soy and sugar. What I wanna do is go ahead and cook all of these together for about 10 to 30 minutes, depending on the consistency you want. Go ahead and strain it. You can store this for later or use it right away. I'm using wooden skewers. They've been soaked in water. I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken and vegetables. I'm using some bell peppers and onions. I've cut up my chicken thigh meat into thin strips or into chunks. So for the skewers, all you're gonna do is simply add your meat, one or two pieces at a time, and what I like to do is stick it in one side, roll it over the top of the skewer, and maybe penetrate it two or three times. The reason you wanna do this is so that you don't have loose pieces. Depending on the size of the meat you're using, you're gonna to have to do this one or two times. If your meat is the size of a traditional yakitori skewer, you're not going to have to do that. You only have to put it piece by piece, they're much smaller than the other ones with the bell peppers on it. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and set it off to the side on a plate and we're ready to grill. All right, I've got my skewers are ready to go. My sauce is also ready. The grill I'm using is a Weber grill. You can use whatever you have. You wanna make sure it's really hot coals. I'm using a hardwood charcoal. Um, that's very similar to the binchotan, which people use in Japan. So with that being said, another thing I would highly suggest is using gloves. So I'm using these gloves right here. These are Weber grill gloves so that you can actually touch the skewers when they're really hot and not have to use tongs. Now, obviously I do have tongs here, but with the gloves, I can literally turn all the skewers with my hands, which is way easier to do. Last but not least, uh, for the sauce, as you can see, I already prepared it. I've got a brush. I'm literally gonna dip the skewers right into the sauce, and uh, the brush is gonna help brush on some of the sauce a little bit later. Now it's time to grill. My coals are really hot. I'm gonna go ahead and place my first few skewers right onto the grill. Now, I like to do direct heat, but if you got bigger chunks of chicken, you're gonna wanna do a little bit indirect at first because you're gonna have much more meat to cook and you wanna make sure to get it up to temp. The key point here is always be paying attention to your chicken. You're gonna to wanna to flip it constantly. You don't wanna burn anything. Now, a little bit of caramelization is great, especially with some of those fatty pieces, but what you're gonna do is make sure to cook your yakitori all the way through. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and remove it off your grill, dip it right into your sauce, and go ahead and lather on some extra sauce on the parts that don't get dipped, and then you're gonna replace it back onto the grill. Once you do that, you're basically done and all you're gonna do is caramelize some of the sugars in the sauce, get a little bit more flavor on there and you're good to go. Now another option is a very easy method where you're gonna go ahead and marinate the chicken and you're gonna grill it with big pieces of chicken thighs. Get a bag, you can do this in a Tupperware. You're gonna put your pieces of chicken 
as well as the bone and the skin in there. Pour in your sauce, go ahead and let all the air out and let it sit for at least an hour. You don't need to marinate it for any longer than this, especially if it's just sitting out on the counter. Next, you're gonna go ahead and pull it out. And what I like to do is first skewer the chicken onto two metal skewers. And the reason I do this is because they're gonna be such large pieces, it's gonna be easier to flip rather than just one where you are in danger of the chicken actually spinning around the skewer okay and then for the skins I just get a regular skewer and then I put them on and then the bones I'm gonna go ahead and put those directly onto the grill and it's a delicious snack I usually snack on these while I'm serving other people so go ahead and add these to the grill you're gonna go ahead and cook them indirectly especially because the chicken thigh chunks are so large and then once you get to 160 degree temperature uh, internally you can move them directly over the coals char the sauce and the sugar a little bit and it's ready to serve. What I love about this method is you can just slide it off the skewer, chop it up and it's ready for people to just pick at it, bite-sized pieces and it's very convenient if you've got to get together or a party the pan fry method. So if you don't have a grill, this is something anybody can do no matter what you've got going on at home. All you need is a stove and a frying pan. So obviously you've already seen my chicken and vegetables skewered. The yakitori is ready to go. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and salt and pepper your chicken. Go ahead and turn on the heat to medium high. Let your pan warm up so it's nice and hot. Go ahead and lay down some oil. I'm using some chicken fat today. Once that's nice and heated through, you're gonna place your yakitori skewers on there and you're gonna go ahead and grill on each side. The goal here is to get a nice golden brown color all around. Right when it's got the right color, I go ahead and add some water cover it and let the steam really cook through the chicken. This is gonna do two things, cook the chicken all the way and also keep it moist. Once that's all done and the water has evaporated, you're gonna go ahead and do the same type of dunk style for the yakitori you do on the grill. Go ahead and dunk it, lather on some sauce all over and then return it to the pan. This is where you're just gonna finalize it by caramelizing those sugars in the sauce and it's good to eat. Yakitori, there you go. I've got the more traditional way of making it. I'm sharing you my easy method. And lastly, even if you don't have a grill, you can do it right on the stove on a frying pan. I hope you try this. Any way is gonna be delicious, especially with that sauce. Hit that like button if you got hungry. Comment below what's the next recipe you guys wanna see from me. And I hope you guys are cooking. I'm gonna enjoy this last piece of chicken. Still got this. <laughs> mm.